how are you? Hello, it's Rachel here. I am coming live, finally. This I am calling Spiritual Success Sunday. I used to do these segments a few years ago now in this group and I stopped and for some reason I had an inkling a few hours ago to go live with you guys and share some things but the technology gods weren't with me at that point and so I was even all gussied up I had notes I was all motivated and then like things got cut off halfway and so I just put it away and my son has just gone to sleep so I was like do it now you know get on there now and so I thought I'd just go live and just show up and this is going to be a bit rough but oh uh, kimberly's here hi kimberly nice to see you thanks for joining this is quite late i think for some people um this is the only time i can seem to get any admin done <laughs> i just say anything that i want to get done um otherwise it's, it's netflix so anyway i wanted to share some things because at the moment i am sharing things that i need to remind myself of right now during this season and i don't know what you're going through right now but the thing that keeps coming up for me um, that I keep having to kind of refocus on is what are you asking for? What am I asking for in my life right now? What am I asking God for? And I was looking up scriptures. Now, look, if you've just joined this group and you're like, what is this girl talking about? I talk about faith stuff and on Sundays I give my permission, myself permission to go there. And if you're on here and only interested about business, I just want to say one thing. Business is a spiritual game. I do not believe you can have real authentic success without God. I'm just saying that. doesn't mean you can't make money without Him, but I do not believe you can fulfill your purpose. You can live joyfully, that you can have the impact you desire to make without God and his blessing and his provision without co-creating with him. So that's kind of a big overall uh, arching of my message, but I just wanted to kind of say that. So I'm calling this Spiritual Success Sunday. If you guys seem to like it and it resonates with you, maybe I'll make this a regular segment uh, ongoing. Um, but anyway, here we are. So I wrote down just a couple of scriptures because it's you know good to have the anchoring because I think sometimes in the world of business or of, I don't know, entrepreneurship or career stuff, whatever you want to call it. There's this thing of, you know, you everything is possible. And I absolutely believe that. I believe that anything is possible with God. I do. But sometimes I think this message gets a little diluted. But before we get into that, I'm just going to uh, rant off a couple of scriptures and we'll go from there. So in Matthew 7, 7, it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. In James 4, 2, it says, you do not have because you do not ask God. And in Ephesians 3, 20, and this one always challenges me, okay? And please um, say hello if you're watching live. And if, you know, anything resonates with you, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It's okay. I don't mind. Um, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or think according to the purpose at work within us. Now, let me tell you something about that scripture. That scripture that so many people have like preached on, and I'm not a preacher, I do talk, but I've, I've just got my own perspective on things. And for a really long time in my business, I kind of kept my faith stuff separate. Like I was like, there's my business box, there's my family box, there's my money box, and there's my God box. You can't put your faith in a box, people. And when I realized that the only success that I've actually had in my business is when I am so in tune with God and what is meant for me and what he has for me. And a side note to this. Okay, let me just say this. One of the biggest lessons I had to learn was when I was, I think, in my early 20s and I, I was at uni and I really needed a job, like really needed a casual job. And I heard about this job going at this computer store and it seemed good. They had nice uniforms and it was air conditioned and the pay was yeah, okay. And I knew someone who worked there who could get me in. And he was like, oh, by the way, they're looking for cashiers. And I was like, I can count and swipe cards, like sign me up. I went to my mother and I said, Mom, you have to pray. You got to pray. I got to get this job. Got to get this job. And she just kind of looked at me with that, this look that I only know now, you know, and it was, she was like, well, okay. And she, you know, went into the throne room. She prayed and I got the job. Worst decision ever. And I swear to you, I honestly think that God only gave me that job to teach me a huge lesson. And that lesson was this. 
Be careful what you pray for. Be careful that you think you know more than God what is good for you. Now, I learned a lot. I, I learned so much about photos and people. And the thing is, I knew nothing about computers. And they threw me on the sales floor on the first day. And I was hanging out in Nerdville. And frankly, I was totally out of my element. It was like people were speaking Japanese to me every day. I had no idea what was going on. But anyway, I did learn a lot. But I honestly know now. I don't think God's provision was meant to be that stressful for me, but I asked for that, so he allowed for that. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say don't ever think that your plans are better than God's. So here's the thing. Um, what is it, the question that I have for you is this, what is it that you are asking for right now? What is it that you are asking God for, Nerdville? Yeah, that's right, Georgina. It was Nerdville. And you know what? They were like happy nerds, and I was happy for them. But I remember this one guy saying to me, on, I wasn't meant to be in sales, by the way. Like, I wasn't. I thought I was just going to be the cashier girl looking all cute with my coffee. But no, they threw me on the sales floor. And I had the sales guy come up to me, like, after the third customer probably walked away looking bewildered. And he said, do you know anything about computers? And I said, I know how to turn one on. And I was a salesperson. Like, you have no idea how out of my element I was. Anyway, what did I learn? I learned not to pray that specific uh, about certain things. That's what I learned. And I did learn about photos. I found my element there. But anyway, Nerdville. Yes, that's where I was. And I thought I was nerdy. But no, these guys are on a different level. But I was thankful. Very thankful for the job. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. So <laughs> it's good you're here. Okay. So what do I want to say about this? Because of what's happening at the moment with COVID, a lot of the conversations I'm having with friends, with clients, it's about how difficult things are. And God knows, I know how difficult they are. They're, they're not easy, easy for us either. You know, everyone's had their own stresses. Things have affected people in such different ways. But here's the thing. Um, COVID was not a surprise to God. It surprised everyone else, but it's not a surprise to him. He is not surprised about who is the president or the prime minister, what the economy looks like. He's not surprised about the issues you're having personally. None of this is a surprise to him. So with that in context, the question I have again for you is, what are you asking him for? Now, when I was a kid, I remember um, Christmas. We didn't have a lot of money growing up, but my parents were really great about on Christmas and birthdays, really trying to make it special. We didn't have a lot of money, but I, I do remember that. They always really tried to make those times really special for us. And I don't know if anyone else can kind of, you know, relate to that. Thank you for this time. Oh, my pleasure, Georgina. I'm glad you could be here. Um, yeah. <laughs> I get so distracted. Okay. So anyway, I remember this one Christmas. I remember my mother used to work at a place called JC Penney's, which is like uh, Myers in Australia or in the UK. It would be like... Um, God, what do you call it? The really big, uh, that really special British guy. Um, anyway, Selfridges, something like that. So anyway, big, lovely retail chain. And they used to send these really big, thick catalogs. I don't know if anyone else got them, but they were huge. And we would go through them and be like, oh my gosh, this is so nice. Look at the bedding. Look at oh, the toys. Look at everything. It's so special. And of course, we love the toy section. That was like our favorite thing. This one Christmas, I remember, my mother, I'm pretty sure she asked us to do this, or maybe we just did it on our own accord. My sister and I went through the entire JCPenney catalog, and we circled in red everything that we wanted. Everything that we wanted. And for some reason, I believe that my mother actually said to us, why don't you just highlight what you want? I don't know. I do not remember her ever asking us to do that before. We would kind of do it, you know, a little. But she, it was like a specific instruction. Go and circle what you want. And we were like, oh, my gosh. And I remember highlighting, like, there was like a Barbie Grand Cherokee truck car thing. There was Jasmine and Aladdin and these, like all this stuff that we would never normally get. We would never even think to ask for. We just wouldn't because we were not those people. We got a lot of hand-me-down stuff. We got a couple of new things, but new Barbies were very, very unusual in our family. Come Christmas, that one Christmas, I'll never forget it. I swear to you, everything that we highlighted and circled was under that tree. I will never forget that Christmas because it was pretty special and we wouldn't have another one like it ever again. But it was that one time and I think she swung an amazing amount of discounts. I still to this day don't know exactly how she did it. But everything that we asked for, we received. And I just, it stuck with me as I was thinking today about how um, 
how plain we are in our requests sometimes. And if you were given a specific instruction to say, here's a catalog of life, can you go through and circle everything that you want? Here's the finances category. Here's the relationships. Here's the home. Here's the travel. Here's the business, the money, like everything. If you were given that catalog of life, what would you circle? Like, have you asked God for those things? Have you even put it on your vision board? Have you even declared it out loud? Have you named it or claimed it? Or have you been stuck in this COVID mindset? And our TD Jakes refers to it as a dis-ease. It's not a disease, it's a dis-ease, like that we can easily buy into if we're not careful. And I'm not saying that it's not a, you know, there are, it's definitely a challenging time, but it's not challenging for God. Okay, so, all right, I had a couple of principles here. I wanted to be all formulaic and how I shared things, but here's what you need to know about when you're asking. So, okay, God can do anything. Got it, Rachel. What else do you want me to know about this? I want you to know four of the things. There are four principles behind this that I believe are really important that, sure, you can ask God for whatever you want, but you need to, it needs to be in line with these four things. Number one, your motive must be pure and in God's will. What do I mean by that? I mean that it can't just be about you getting a yacht. I'm, I love the idea of a yacht. Maybe one day I'll have one. But it, it's, it can't be just about you. I honestly, I honestly believe the only success you can have in your life is when you are striving for impact and to serve people. Doesn't mean you can't make money. Doesn't mean all of those other things. But I'm reminded of in, um, in the Bible, the story of Solomon, who was a king. God came to him one night and said, Solomon, tell me what you want. Tell me whatever your heart's desire is and I will give it to you. And he said, can you please just give me wisdom so I can rule these people? And God said, because you have asked for wisdom and because your heart is for others, basically you want to be a good ruler, I'm going to give you so much wisdom and I'm going to give you more riches than anyone in the land. And he blessed, the, he blessed him like he was like the richest ruler, okay? And that's the thing, because his heart and his intent was to serve. And I think that is such an incredible, it's such a good reminder to us that your motive needs to be about serving others. That doesn't mean you got to serve them broke. I, I don't believe in that either. But it was like um, your motive needs to be something that's in line with God's will for you, with his purpose, and something that's going to serve his greater good and his greater glory. Number two. You need to believe that God can do it for you. Now, sometimes I fall into this trap where I think, oh, God, girl, girl, God can, you know, he can move the ocean. He can, you know, he let the Israelites through. He can, I can preach to the cows come home about someone else's miracle. But when it comes to my own, sometimes I can get into this weird thing of, yeah, he did that for such and such. Yeah, he did that for Moses and the Israelites, or he did that for my neighbor, Jane. But is he going to do it for me? Sometimes I'm not so sure. I'm just being real with you. I don't know if anyone can relate to that. So that comes into what are you feeding at the moment? You are either feeding your faith or you're feeding your fear. You're feeding your faith into God and what he has promised you and to what is possible for you, to everything that he has said is true, or the fear that it's not true, it's not real for me, I've gone too far. I can't come back from this. You just don't understand where I'm coming from. Things are really bad. I don't think it's going to work out. Like all of the, those things, those two things that you've got a decision, you're either feeding your faith or you're feeding your fear. Those are the decisions you're making when you're nurturing certain thoughts, when you're allowing your thoughts to go one way or the other. And that's something I constantly have to really um, get a hold of. Yeah. And get a hold of means that if a thought comes in that goes, it's just not good right now. This this one thing, it's not great. And then I go, yeah, but God's promises are true. He promises me that I am a daughter of the Most High. He promises me that I will never be alone. He promises me that he has good plans for me, plans for me to prosper and not, not harm. So those are the decisions that I have to make, that I believe that God can do it for me as well as everyone else he's done it for and everyone else who I believe he can do things for. Number three, work. Faith without works is useless. So you got to give God something to bless. What do I mean by that? It means like even in the story of David and Goliath, David wasn't just sitting there going, God, look, I am just waiting for you to show up with that one thing. He was working in the fields with sheep. Bull ring. Come on. 
but he was clearly being trained in there for something and that training helped him defeat Goliath and then you know become a ruler and do all those things but what I'm saying is you got to give God something to work with you got to give him something to bless okay so that's where the hustle side of you comes in if you do not know what to do just do something just there and I I'm the worst sometimes at showing I'm being like I am not gonna do one thing until I hear from God sometimes there's wisdom in that and sometimes that's just a form of procrastination and you're just kind of blaming God for it I'm just saying because I've done that before so you gotta work okay so you can you know ask God for something but if you're not showing up at your work if you're not showing up in your business God I want you know 10 new clients in the next in the next two weeks okay are you showing up live are you are you following leads are you doing what you need to do you know you want a certain relationship to turn you want you know your help to turn around you got to do your part so God can do his I believe that we co-create with God we don't just sit there and wait for things to happen I believe in you know it's not a passive faith it's a faith that requires you to show up and get uncomfortable sometimes so give God something to bless that's number um, that's number three and then number four last but not least be open to the how so whatever it is that you ask of God and if it's in line with his intention for you if it's in line with you know serving people with the impact that you're meant to have if you believe that God can do it for you if you're working towards something if you're working towards whatever this desire is and it's real and authentic be open to how it might show up I think sometimes God likes to surprise us and how he is going to provide for us I know that's happened to me a couple of times and it can be very humbling and it can also challenge our perceptions perhaps of people or of things of even jobs right or clients that's happened to me too so don't be surprised in the how and don't shut it down because it's not in your vision of how something is meant to come to pass so do not be surprised if your provision comes from a place that doesn't make you feel a hundred percent excited if I'm being completely honest there but whatever it is that you ask there is a way that God has like he He's a God of promises. He's a generational God. He's a God that comes through. He's the God of the miraculous. And by the way, he knew all of this was going to happen. So I just want to encourage you tonight because I needed some encouragement too. So I, I, you know, I teach what I need to hear myself. But don't stop asking and don't just make your asks for this season of COVID, okay? Obviously, you know, because it says, give us our day, our daily bread. God is going to give you enough, but ask for more than enough. Ask for your big thing. Go back to being that kid at Christmas in the, you know, with the magazine, with the red marker going, I want that, God. I want that. That's what I love about kids, by the way. They don't care how broke they are. They do not care how broke their parents are. When it comes to Christmas, they're still going to ask for the big fancy thing. I know I did, even though I knew my parents. It's funny. It's like I knew my parents were broke. And then when it came to Christmas, I was like, well, Santa's got big pockets, I'm sure. So in the same way, God has, he doesn't even have pockets. They're like, it's like the Mary Poppins suitcase. It doesn't end. So why are we not asking him for the thing? Do not be affected that much. Don't let your faith be affected by the season that we're in globally, right? Don't let the pandemic affect your faith. So that's my message to you tonight. I hope that's helpful. Uh, that's my little spiritual success Sunday segment. Um, and I've been like, actually, you wouldn't believe I've been trying to get a, do this for hours. But that was a very, uh, that was a very rough tumbling of faults but I just wanted to encourage you tonight I'm clearly starting to show up again in this group and I hope it's of help and of service um, we've got a lot of exciting things that are coming up that I cannot wait to share with you but if any of this resonates please share some takeaways okay and if you'd like to see more of this I'm happy to show up more and share more of these more regularly so that's it for me have a lovely evening and I hope you have a wonderful blessed week